Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Anyone following the election knows there's a lot at stake. There are a lot of issues on the table. But there's one issue that the spotlight hasn't really shined on, at least not in the old media. It's called the Freedom of Choice Act, FOCA for short. And it's worth finding out more about this. Why? Because one of the presidential candidates said it says that he will sign that into law and it will be the very first thing he will do as president. Well, the first thing I'd do as president is, is sign the Freedom of Choice Act. Uh, that's the first thing that I'd do. Um, he made those comments at Planned Parenthood's fundraiser in the summer of 2007 in response to a question after his speech. Let's see. Economic market crisis, worldwide terrorist threats, often being more than just threats, just ask the citizens of London and Madrid. Seemingly out of, out of control gasoline prices pushing the economy to the brink, devastation wreaked by massive hurricanes. That's a lot of very pressing issues. National security, economic meltdown, war. Think of all of those issues and then listen to him again. Well, the first thing I'd do as president is, is sign the Freedom of Choice Act. Uh, that's the first thing that I do. Um, Why would the Freedom of Choice Act be so high on this man's to-do list as president so as to eclipse every other issue, big and small? Remember, he said he will do this first. Well, here's a little history. In April of 2007, the U.S. Supreme Court, with new justices John Roberts and Samuel Alito, voted five to four to uphold the ban on partial birth abortion. After 34 years, pro-lifers had finally won protection for a small percentage of unborn babies. Well, in reality, partially born babies. Well, that did it as far as the abortion lovers were concerned. They retreated back to their lairs and produced a piece of legislation that put an end to this what they call chipping away at their sacrament of abortion. That legislation, in direct response to having lost ground on partial birth abortion, is so far-reaching as to make abortion encased in American life until we no longer exist as a nation, which might come sooner than we think if it ever becomes law. What does the Freedom of Choice Act actually do? Well, if you listen to the people who support the killing and dismemberment of the weakest in society, you know, the crowd that's really trustworthy, all FOCA would do is make Roe versus Wade law. As it is now, Roe is a ruling, a very bad one, from the High Court that every lawmaking body must consider when making laws to limit or end abortion. The laws are then compared to Roe versus Wade by judges who then rule whether the new law contradicts the principles of Roe versus Wade. That's the status quo. That's how things are now. Occasionally, judges allow certain restrictions to be placed on abortion, like parental notification, parental consent, no taxpayer funding, doctors and clinics needing certain licenses, mothers having to be informed about certain aspects of abortion, no partial birth abortions. It's taken years and years, decades of battles by pro-lifers to get these reasonable limitations placed on the sacred right to abortion. In other words, Abortion has not been viewed by the Supreme Court up to now as an absolute right. Some restrictions could be placed on it, and in fact have. But all of those restrictions will come to an end faster than you could fire up the abortion vacuum machine if FOCA is signed into law. You see, that's the whole reason the party of abortion wrote the legislation. They were so angered that for the first time, a specific type of abortion had become outlawed partial birth abortion, that they went straight back to the drawing board and came up with a bill that would wipe out any abortion restrictions at all, unfettered, total access to any abortion for any reason whatsoever, no limitations. In the words of one of the bill's major sponsors, California Senator Barbara Boxer, the no restriction policy would establish a, quote, absolute right to abortion, end quote. Her words, absolute right. Methinks the senator blabbeth too much. Absolute, nothing can challenge it. It will never be able to be reversed. Now the purveyors of the legal lunacy 
the uh, running off of the mouth of Senator Boxer notwithstanding, are selling this with a gimmicky marketing slogan. They claim the only thing FOCA would do is, quote, codify Roe versus Wade, end quote. In other words, just go ahead and pass it. It's no big deal. It just makes sure that we all understand that the Supreme Court ruling really is the law of the land. Really, that's all it's going to do? It seems to me that for the past 35 years and 50 million dead children later, everyone pretty much understands that abortion is legal and you can pretty much get it whenever you want for whatever reason you want. Why would we need a law to make sure that we all know that? because there's much more to that than just that. That's why Barack Obama feels very comfortable standing up at a fundraiser for the largest abortion provider in the country and proclaiming the first thing he will do is make sure no one can ever challenge abortion again, not no way, not no how, not no never. And that's why they applaud him so enthusiastically. Well, the first thing I'd do as president is, is sign the Freedom of Choice Act. Uh, that's the first thing that I'd do. Um. His candidacy, his party, its supporters thrive and survive on abortion on demand. So why wouldn't they seek to make sure that every obstacle to it is finally and forever removed? That's the point of the Freedom of Choice Act. Come November, remember Obama. Soft on terrorists, but tough on fetuses. I'm Michael Voris.